<laughs> really, I said to you yesterday, come in any day, I like Gilbert you. does. I, I had a hard time hearing you on the way out. You were tired and you could barely speak after your day. No. Uh, because when Gilbert's here, I, need, I can't even get a word in. How are you going to get one in? <laughs> I'll watch make faces at him. Don't be foolish. <laughs> hey, Gilbert. And, and I'm Gilly. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Gilly. Hi, I'm Gilly. <laughs> Gilbert Gottfried, of course, who's very uptight around cameras. Yes. No, I feel real comfortable. I gotta make gas. Oh, oh you really? Oh, you I have, have such gas. Right I have so much yeah. gas. I apologize to all my fans. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Cam my guess. And the camera guys are just in here talking. Just keep talking, guys. It's no problem. I'm just doing a radio show. It's yeah. no big deal. It's only the way I make a living. It's now, okay. Who is this camera crew? I don't know. I, I, which camera crew are you? The E camera crew? Yeah, they're just doing a documentary thing we're working on for my show. Oh. But but uh, it was supposed to be CBS television here filming me, but... They're not here. I don't know what's going Where are they? They're outside. Why are they outside? Waiting for this crew to get finished. Well, Gary, why are they outside? Because I was going to bring them in during... They just got here. I was going to wait until oh. the next break. Okay, fine. Just to make life easier Good, good. You. Okay, good. Bubba Bowie. Bubba Bowie. There's a camera crew. <laughs> the camera crew's coming on. There are a lot of camera crew outside. <laughs> they're, they're, I, I left them outside because they had a camera. <laughs> you know, I don't know if you want a camera crew with a camera. <laughs> Baba Bowie. <laughs> Baba Bowie. They're, they're, they're cameras. Do you want them to turn the cameras on when they're in here? <laughs> or or should, should they just come in with the camera and just put the camera down? And he, he's supposed to coordinate the show. He coordinates like his mind is palsied. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're from CBS. CBS, mom. I think they're from CBS, mom. Baba Bowie. Baba Bowie. Baba Bowie, fight. Anyway, Gilbert's going to be at Caroline's tomorrow. Uh, he'll be at Nick's in Boston, October 8th and 9th. He'll be at Bananas in Saddlebrook, New Jersey, October 22nd. He'll be at Governor's on Long Island, October 29th. And by the way, Billy West is featured on the new Ren and Stimpy album. He sings all the songs. Oh, he is Ren and Stimpy. Yeah, he does all the voices. So. <laughs> he does all the songs. So there's a little it's his album. Can he do all of them? <laughs> yeah. Well, I give you a copy of Billy's album if you want to go to the kids. <laughs> Wolf. 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 All right, Robin, let's do some news with this uh, great crew. And uh, Gilbert, good to see you. I understand you're very busy these days. <laughs> Gilbert, of course, last time was on... Uh, was very displeased to learn that uh, he lost a major commercial because he was on here making jokes. Uh, yes. yes. What Craft, has happened since then? Craft Miracle Whip Mayonnaise. <laughs> Craft Miracle Whip Mayonnaise, a really worthwhile product, yes. a product that should be very proud of itself, was upset by something Gilbert said on this show. Which yes. was, what, what did you say? I don't even know. I don't even remember. I think it was just the very presence here. Yeah, well. Just being here was enough, huh? I feel comfortable saying that Miracle Whip is really a sucky product. Oh. <laughs> Tastes like Elmer's glue. Yeah. But Gilbert, being the cheapest man in show business, he, he freaked out over the whole thing. That was money. Yeah. I plugged the American Nazi party. Yeah, they paid me. that's what it was. Yeah. Anyway, Robin, what's going on you in the news? work for them. Hey, what yeah. happened to you? How come you weren't invited onto the Emmys? You're usually there. Oh, that's because of the Pee Wee Herman remark. Oh. Yeah, you blew that yeah. a couple of years ago. Masturbation's a crime. I should be on death row. Right. That's a terrible yeah. thing to yeah. say. And You're... they were all shocked. Yeah. Yeah. The the uh, Fox Network apologized to the American public for it. <laughs> Over that. Yeah. Yeah. They produced studs, but I was too dirty. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you just know. say, <clears throat> well, Gilbert's got an unusual laugh. I never heard it before. <laughs> <laughs> like Sydney Green Street. <laughs> but, uh, anyway, uh, Gilbert is here. Robin, what's in the news? Well, I was just going to tell you that the Emmys didn't do very well in the ratings. No, because geez, there was no fun involved. There was no Gilbert. I wasn't there. But at least Angela Lansbury was changing outfits. <laughs> she changed outfits, but it still didn't help the rating. Wasn't that erotic? No, oh, she's very... She's a turn-on. Are you eating? Yeah, I'm eating you, a you, pretzel. It's necessary to eat? While, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, can't you wait till the you commercial? Know, you're only in here how often? Yeah, he's in here like once uh, every was... three months. <laughs> he comes in and he has to eat a pretzel now. <laughs> Immediately. He's very hungry. <laughs> yeah, they're free. <laughs> <laughs> you gonna eat pretzels? He's gotta shove his mini in <laughs> as he can. Yeah, give me pretzels. Give me pretzels and I'll show up. All right. Well, the early re rating returns show that uh, CBS won the evening on uh, yes. Sunday night. Yes. So that means Yuck. that Angela Lansbury couldn't beat herself.
because she was, of course... I was beating myself last night. <laughs> <laughs> Angela Lansbury. Yes. I had a picture of Angela Lansbury, and I was beating myself. Wasn't she nice when, like, she was wearing that red low-cut top? Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah she's got one big ass. <laughs> I bet her ass hangs like a Christmas ornament. Uh, <laughs> Uh, hey, she's in there to put out a workout tape. You know, she's really into her body. Get out of here. Yeah, she's got a workout tape. She's putting out a workout tape? She already has one out. Boo! One and two and get rid of the gobbler under your neck. <laughs> the triple chin workout. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> so anyway, she didn't live and in person. She didn't manage to beat herself as uh, wow. that character she plays in Murder She Wrote. Hey, I beat myself. Hey, I'm beating myself every night. Oh, why don't you, hey, Angela? Why don't you go home and beat yourself? Oh, Gilbert Dice Clay. <laughs> Do you know what women want, want Howard? Yes. What is the most important thing in a woman's life? Getting away from Gilbert. <laughs> <laughs> Funny that didn't make the Come on, wouldn't you answer that way? <laughs> At this point in time? Yeah. yeah. Well, maybe they just weren't aware of Gilbert. Uh, um, apparently it was a national... Okay, what came in second? I think call. a woman would want... I'll tell you three things a woman would want. Seriously? What's the most important thing in her life? Hey, guys, will, okay, for, most important thing in her life is stability a man well you're absolutely right it's okay. her relationship okay secondly i know they're all emotional <laughs> secondly the most important thing to her is money okay let me see oh yeah and like no, maybe no 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 and don't tell me sex <laughs> no that that was not on the list <laughs> let me think that ranked last i've never, never found that. that to be true yeah if just once i'd like to hear one go um most important a vibrator the size of a fire hydrant? <laughs> Maybe that would be mad? No, that's not going to happen. Uh, what, what number it, what one, it, having sex with Gilbert. Yeah. <laughs> number two. All right, here it is. First of all, relationships are the most important. <laughs> and aside from her man's love... My job. <laughs> the three qualities a woman values most are her man's respect. Yeah. His friendship. Oh. And their shared values. Mm -hmm. And a reusable tampon. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sexual satisfaction ranked dead last. Boo! <laughs> <laughs> As if you I couldn't get out. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what else is going on here. Hmm. I value a Puerto Rican male stripper on the side. <laughs> With needle marks in his arm. Ugh, my values. Why is it that women don't think that much of sex and relationships are so important? Because they don't have a penis. Men don't. <laughs> 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 Kathy Lee Gifford has broken her promise already. Remember she was saying that she was going to shield... That obnoxious twit. <laughs> she was going to shield her new baby from the press, and she... I, 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 I bow one thing, to shield my baby from the press. <laughs> I want to eat that baby. <laughs> well, last night, she and the new baby, Cassidy and Cody, all appeared on Monday Night Football. Uh, but oh, of I course, watched. But of course, because what else does she do except reveal know. her family and those losers who love her so much? You know, it's really weird, too, because, like, I know, like, um, like Ronnie the limo driver's telling yeah. me, his wife, uh -huh. she loves Regis and Kathy Lee mm. and went to their show, you know, live with Regis and Kathy Lee and had to Are see them kidding? perform and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, it's unbelievable. If they could see me now. <laughs> in the morning, in the evening, Richard Simmons, what are you doing on the Carnival Cruise? Hi, Kathy! Hi, Kathy. <laughs> Hi! Howard Stern, what are you doing on the Carnival Cruise? I'm here to bitch slap you. I'm going to knock you down and dress you in black on the deck of this boat. <laughs> <laughs> you white guy. You. So despite many declarations that this new baby would not be uh, thrown into the public eye, there she was last night with the baby on her lap, and apparently the baby started crying, and she, of course, and took it. Like mother, like a mother. My worst nightmare. <laughs> oh, man, can you imagine? She's so, is she such a nothing. Sociopath. But in the light of <laughs> But in light of what's been happening to her recently, I'm just shocked by this behavior. Do you realize that uh, she has been warned 
that there's a man out there stalking her. No! <laughs> and yet she still shows up on TV she with her children. Because what else? She's driven. What else can she do except she, show off her family? I mean, she's not an entertainer. She figures the baby can take the bullet if he shoots her. <laughs> <laughs> she'll she'll, she'll hold a baby in front of her and go, no, shoot this. Yeah. <laughs> she wasn't saying she's going to shield the baby from the press. She's going to use the yeah. baby as a shield. Oh. Wouldn't it be great if Giff got senile? And then they played football with the newborn baby. <laughs> <laughs> he passed it out to the uh, players. I spiked the baby. <laughs> <laughs> I have Alzheimer's. <laughs> uh, forgive me, Kathy Lee. <laughs> oh, Frank, you look relaxed. And Kathy Lee. She has someone stalking her, and she's going around with the baby? Yeah. You think this that's... guy actually... Uh... Tied up a woman and raped her uh, with and had all these. Talk books slowly. Oh. <laughs> he had a whole book <laughs> full of clippings of Kathy Lee. Apparently, he's obsessed with her <laughs> and kept talking about her doing this whole rape sequence. You say and, it like uh, it's a bad thing. <laughs> she was notified that this guy was out there and that he was up to this kind of stuff, and wow. she's still out there doing her thing. Is there no decency? <laughs> The other thing that cracks me up is that people were um, just fascinated on Saturday night watching her on the Miss America pageant, how she's gotten herself back into shape so quickly. I told my wife that. Everybody's congrat. Uh, look at how, oh, look, she looks marvelous. She just had a baby. And look at how good she looks. She's just lost all her weight. Yeah. I'm and a, she looks wonderful. My wife comes to me last night and goes, well, how do I look? Because my wife's been on a diet. Uh -huh. I go, well, you look good, but, you know, Kathy Lee. I just say, you know, Kathy Lee. <laughs> and then she went, uh, well, what do you mean, Kathy Lee? I just go, oh, I don't know. You know what your wife should have said to you? What? Nanny. Nanny. <laughs> hey, nanny, nanny. <laughs> I can't believe someone's stalking her. Hey, you know, uh, Fred wants to rape Regis. <laughs> <laughs> well, 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 I think that would be much fun. <laughs> also in the news this morning, Michelle Phillips of Mamas and Papas fame and Not Landing fame <laughs> was the victim of a robbery the other night. Oh, my God. Was she there was... any sexual abuse? <laughs> no, Gilbert. All right, then I'll look outside. Was, was the guy robbing her Papa John? He needs money. Yeah. <laughs> I need a liver transplant. I need a liver transplant. <laughs> this is just a fortune. She was robbed, huh? Yeah, she apparently had uh, Get away. to go out to dinner with a friend, and the two of them had driven to a uh, posh West Hollywood uh, restaurant. Get away, Papa John! But the restaurant was already closed. So I have I haven't had a hit since 1963. <laughs> Will you stop and listen to the story? <laughs> All right, so uh, they were sitting in the car discussing what they should do next when uh, apparently two armed men walked up to the car. They had two arms? <laughs> <laughs> they were armed, Howard. Right. And they, and they held a gun to her? Well, they yeah, they held out a oh, handgun and put mommy. it in their face <laughs> and said, give me all your money. Did they make her undress? No. No, they saw her on that landing. Oh, she's, yeah. she's gotten old. <laughs> 20 years ago, we would have made you undress. <laughs> so they took her purse with uh, about $100 and a bunch of credit cards and then wow. ran away. Boy, that's some story. They, they ran away when she showed her breast. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a break, Rob. We'll come if you buy a low jack recovery device right now, you'll also get an alarm system at no extra charge. Now, think about that for a second. You okay. know what? Shut up, Gilbert. No, I'm just adding to Come on, man. commercial. Yeah, that's just what we need. <laughs> More nonsense. <laughs> anyway, it is unbelievable. <laughs> I'm making it like dialogue. <laughs> Let me tell you about a low jack tracking device. It's so good. It's unbelievable. You never have to pay extra for a car alarm because it's now included with the purchase of a low jack recovery device. For just $595, that's it. No monthly fees. You get a low jack retrieve and alarm completely installed. And it just doesn't get any better than this, does it, Robin? No. No, you're fully protected at that point. I'm Robin Gilbert. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, now he's. Hi, a, I say Robin, Robin Gilbert. Gilbert. Robin no. Gilbert. Hi, Robin Gilbert is with us. I thought you sounded peculiar. <laughs> hey, it doesn't get better than this. Just don't shell out an extra 200, 300, or 400 bucks for an alarm. No, why should you do that when you get a low jack already? No, I'm Gilbert. <laughs> I was talking to Gilbert, Robin. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm getting confused now. You're Robin Gilbert. You're a black woman who doesn't get laid. That's a Robin oh, Gilbert. Oh, you're a white man who yeah. doesn't get laid. Yeah. Simply purchase a low jack recovery device That's and you'll get... That's people get us confused. You'll yeah. get a remote activated <laughs> alarm. At no extra charge. Plus, you'll even save up to 25% on your comprehensive auto insurance. See your yeah. new car dealer or call Carla 
at 1-800-95-LOJAC. You know how great LOJAC is. You put it in your car. They don't even tell you where it is. And then when your car's stolen, you call the cops and say, my car was stolen. They turn on a device in their car, and they can track your car right down. Right away. There's nothing better than that. 1-800-95-LOJAC. 1-800-95-LOJAC. Tell Carla you want the special alarm offer that you heard on the Howard Stern Show. Blah, blah. 92.3 K-Rock. We're back with the Howard Stern Show. Yeah. Baba Bowie. Baba Bowie is here, Robin. <laughs> <laughs> what time is it? <laughs> we don't have time for this. There's a, there's a winner waiting in the wings. Oh, I see. Okay, we have to get yeah. back to the FMEs. Radio's most coveted prize. <laughs> the There's a winner. Oh. FME Award with Howard Stern. We're back at the FME's, Robin, because uh, it's time to give out another award. These are the radio awards that go out once a year for incredible performance. Now, what category are we awarding at this time? Somebody tell the moron we don't know the winners. Oh. I know the winners. Oh, you do? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just pretend like we don't know the winner. There are always winners waiting in the room. No, 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 no. No, no, no. He doesn't get it. No. All right, all right. That it's not supposed to look like it's all right. No, I don't get it. All right, we're here at the FMEs. And, uh... <laughs> Shut up. Uh, Gary's teeth are hermetically sealed, so we don't know the winners. <laughs> all right. All right, here we go. This is for the most politically correct guest of the year. Politically correct, okay. Yeah. All right, there are three nominees... And our first nominee is the great actor Alec Baldwin, who called in to yell at me about the National Endowment for the Arts. Yes, I remember this. I am against it. He was for it. He called in, and uh, he's our first nominee in this category, Alec Baldwin Producing. Then you talk about funding controversial art. Hey, wait a second. L listen to your show. No, but I, but you see, I am... What if, all all the, what if all of a sudden the FCC decided they didn't like anything that you But that's said, different. You were off the air. Wait a that's second. Different. That's an issue of censorship. That's exactly You're talking what about, is an issue of. No, but, but this is not censorship. I'm saying anybody should be allowed to do whatever they want, but go get your own funding for it. Yeah, well, then you go get your own radio station for it. Yeah, but wait a second. Wait, you you're not thinking clearly. No, the the FCC, Alec, the radio Alec, radio radio Alec, you're not thinking clearly. You're, you're, you're mixing apples and oranges. Oh, I get it. I'm not thinking like you, so I'm not thinking clearly. Let me, ahead, explain, let, me explain, me let me explain something to you, okay? There are, cer there are certain art forms. Let me just explain one thing to you. There are certain art forms in this country, like dance, for example, right. and symphonies and things like that, yeah. where the basic structure of those art forms and the participants of those art forms could never be supported in probably 95% of the cities around the country. Right. In other words, every time a man sits on stage and plays with the New York Philharmonic, you're watching a guy who has to leave that job and go teach music lessons eight months out of the year to pay his... To, you know, he doesn't make enough money for yeah, that. so be it. And there's no community that he can work in in, you know, Dubuque, Iowa, where he can teach enough music lessons to pay his bills, to be in the Dubuques. You know what I'm Yeah, but, you know, but do you understand that nobody wants to see that anyway? That's why Dubuque won't support it? Wow, unbelievable. <laughs> what a performance, huh? I guess Kim's lips have sucked the brains out of his head. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. Well, of course, Robin... Uh, he was a little irrational. Oh, he was irrational. Harder, Kim. Harder, I'm still able to spell. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, wait, I still have long-term memory. Oh, oh, oh. All right, our next nominee is the great Ed Asner, who called in because he was defending that uh, guy who was the murderer down yes, in Texas. Gary Graham. Yeah. Gary Graham. Yeah. Uh, Ed Asner, producer. And Sally... The Why victim. did you choose to support so strongly this particular death? Uh, yeah, this guy's not so. Case. This guy's nobody to sit there and fight over. Well, because I'm listening to two supposedly educated people who have read the press hype on this and have automatically tried him in the press. Why do you think the press is hyping if a guy admits to doing something? Well, because it's a slow news day, probably. Oh, but come on. I mean, here's no, a, no, here's no, a case on. where you're involved. You well as Wait me. a second. You're involved. Danny Glover's involved. There's a lot of high-profile people That's involved. Right. And you guys are all trying to save the life of this, uh, what I would call a criminal, this marauder. And, and the point is, is whether or not he, whether or not he killed someone is, is moot. The guy. No, I, I am, I am really, I am really shocked. No, you're not. I agreed to go on this program thinking that you would give me pertinent evidence to show the guilt of this man. No, 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 I don't have evidence. I'm not a joke. has picked up the press hype, the fact, I mean, CNN, vaunted CNN with all its supposed objectivity, can constantly talks about his having shot four people. But he has been charged with shooting one person. But he admits to shooting four people. No, he does not. He doesn't? Once again, you're wrong. Wow, Robin, what a performance. Ed Asner uh, fighting for his very life. Or someone's very life. Well, the guy <laughs> didn't admit to killing anyone, so he's innocent. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Uh, <laughs> That's the way it works in a court of law. <laughs> and finally, uh, Richard Belzer. 
is our third nominee in this category. Yeah, right, right, All right, babe, right, babe. Uh, yeah, Sparky. Robin was talking about the opening of uh, the movie Not Without My Daughter. Yes. And uh, Richard didn't like the way people uh, refer to Iranians. Okay. Richard Bell's a producer. Shields has gotten herself a full-time bodyguard. Why? Because she made that movie Not Without My Daughter. Yeah. And she feels that you mean she that will be the racist anti-Arab movie. The no, that was an Iranian. No, the movie uh, based on true Anti facts. The base based on this woman's well, life. I understand they depict all the Iranians in that movie as as a uh, less than human. And yes, then, they are. Well, no. why would you depict them? <laughs> oh, come on, they're great people. They allow women. Did you tell me you're you're pro women? <laughs> And then you tell me that the Iranians are great people. I didn't say they're great people. Because they I, allow you can't their... summarily dismiss... The woman could not get her country. child out of the country. You say you understand. Wait till you see the film, please. Yeah. What film? <laughs> I don't even know <laughs> what, what he's talking about. The Sally Field film? I wouldn't wow. see the film at gunpoint. Well, there it is. Three great nominees, Robin. I'm, I can't wait to open the Who's envelope. Who's going to win? Who's going to win for the best politically correct moment on the show, and the winner is, I knew it, Ed Asner. Ed Asner? Ed Asner, producer. Wow, I and thought Florida was going to be Richard Baldwin. I don't know, Alec Baldwin was pretty good, too. On our phone now to accept his uh, FME is Ed Asner. Wow. <laughs> Mr. Asner? Uh, yes. Yes, congratulations on your FME. Oh, thank you, Batman. Batman? <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, and Robin. Yeah. <laughs> oh, should you, I, or should you. I, well, listen, it's an honor to uh, have you once again on the air, this time under happier circumstances, not to argue about yeah. the guilt or innocence of a man. Well, right. now that you've won seven Emmys and one F Emmy, you yes. must feel incredible. Well, I, I, I do. I, I, uh, I, I would thank my peers. I don't think I have any, but I would like to thank them if they exist. Well, you are without peers. I want to thank the members of this, uh, the, this particular academy uh, for having uh, thank you. the uh, uh, wisdom and the foresight and, and the humility to call. Well, actually, you were the only one willing to accept the award, <laughs> to be honest. Well, I was going to say that in my next line. <laughs> but really, uh, how is it going with, the, uh, with that alleged murderer? Are you uh, doing any better with that? Or have you yeah, forgotten about it? Yeah, I think it? the uh, the various uh, trammels and uh, ramifications are going forward full speed in Texas. They're trying all tries, all kinds of courts of appeals. We're trying to put pressure on the uh, governor to exercise a greater largesse in allowing uh, in allowing evidence to be heard. So within a week, we'll see whether. Uh, uh, he lives or dies, and whether you're right or I'm right. Well, listen, let's hope for a fair trial, and then let's fry him. Well, there's already been a trial. Huh? Oh, another one. If you can release one murder on the street, you've done your job. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Gilbert. Hey, by the way, Mr. Asner, did you watch the Emmys the other night? I certainly did. And you, uh... That's what, that's what emanated uh, with this call, right? Well, it was said that you weren't there, I thought. Yeah. I thought that you should be there, being a man who has won uh, six or seven Emmys. Seven. Seven. Oh, I've been there before. That's, uh, we're leaving it to the young people like you, Howard. Well, what about the Emmys, though? I mean, uh, what do you do with them? The physical Emmy? Do they hang in your house somewhere? They they drape my uh, my mantelpiece. Wow. All of them. All seven of them. They're all together. Seven. The big question this morning is: Will you be defending Florida against all of Europe? <laughs> No, no, Florida can take care of itself. You're I not think kidding. Tourism, uh, is better than ever there. Listen, um, congratulations on your FME. Thank you. I know it's your first, and uh, let's hope there'll be more and more appearances well, I, on the show. I mean, the, the causes will never stop, and, uh, and right. we'll be here ready, ready to uh, to deal with them. And and we want to thank you for addressing it as a politically correct position. Absolutely, and uh, Mr. Asner, thank you for calling in, and congratulations once again. There he um, is. Thank you very much. Ed Asner, of course. And by the way, if you take a look at Ed Asner and yes. you take a look at Mary Tyler Moore, I think you'd all agree that Mr. Asner has aged better than Mary Tyler Moore. <laughs> Am I right, Mr. Asner? I, uh, I see Mary once or twice a year, and I <laughs> never never cease to marvel at how gorgeous she is. Oh, but uh, oh, certainly... We're talking, we're talking about a combination of looks, great talent, does so she have to return to and her coffin when the sun Moore, comes up? Shut that person up. <laughs> hey, shut up, Gilbert, you idiot. He's a moron. That mumbling idiot. So let's hope he gets Gilbert the... Godfrey. Gilbert Gottfried. Let's hope he gets the lethal injection. Yeah. Believe uh, me, I think we'd all I stand behind that. <laughs> we all admit that he's guilty. All of a sudden, Ed Asner is for the death penalty. He is. He suddenly changed his <laughs> for opinion. For Gilbert.
<laughs> so I didn't think. Guy, I mean, there are exceptions. Yeah. <laughs> some, some should have been stopped in the, in the fetal stage. Uh, others somehow escaped. Are you familiar with the work of Gilbert Gottfried, the comedian? No, I I heard him uh, just a minute ago, and that was enough. That was enough. <laughs> just to make you throw up. But uh, I got to tell you. Interesting question. Are you pro-abortion or pro-choice? He's, he's pro-choice. He's Gilbert. He's, no, he is, he is pro-choice. Okay. Of course he is. Am I correct? That's correct. Of course. He, well, listen, he knows it's ridiculous to have more unwanted children in this country. That he knows. Of course, because okay. most of the people who are against abortion don't do a, a thing to lift a finger to help uh, these children once they're born. I see. Mr. Asner is for stopping these people before they get here. Exactly. Not killing and, them well, after they're here. You're okay. damn right he is. He's the for choice. The theory is abortion is murder and he supports murderers. Well, get out of here. Well, you know what, Mr. Asner's right. You're a moron. He's our guest, Gilbert, not yours. Yeah, Gilbert, no one would go on your stupid show. Mr. Asner, uh, I did not think Mary Tyler Moore should have wore a sleeveless dress. Uh, I thought it was unbecoming. I was was too busy listening to her, thinking about her, watching her. I, I, you know, I, I, I really didn't, I didn't see what she was wearing. Did you spy Grant Tinker sitting next to her as well? No, no I was, thought I did. That no, was not her, that was not Grant Tinker. I saw her young husband there. Yeah, yeah, that was uh, the gray-haired man next to her was her father. Oh, is that right? Yeah, Isn't no, it, that... was, it was her son. No, it no. wasn't. <laughs> Gilbert. Gilbert, you know what? I am sick of you. Yeah. I am so sick of you. <laughs> I really want to. You're supposed to be thrown out. I'm going to give you the lethal injection. <laughs> All right. He's very annoying, Mr. Asner. I didn't mean to have him here to rain on your parade when you win this uh, very coveted award. Well, listen, there, there are always spots on the windshield. All right. Very good. <laughs> and uh, thank you, Ed Asner. Thank you. The great Ed Asner there accepting his FME. Thank you. And there he goes. Uh, he loves it here on the show. <laughs> Gilbert. Gilbert, you moron. <laughs> Gilligan. <laughs> Gilligan, little buddy. Oh. <laughs> Gilbert, you got spunk. <laughs> All right, we're going to take a break, Rob, and we'll get back to news. Yes. What's the big story coming up next so well, we can we're prepare? We're going to talk about James Conn again. Remember yesterday he was uh, questioned for several hours by the police? Well, what is the outcome? James Conn. The only the thing that comes to mind with James Conn is he has a very hairy back. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back right after these words. Give Gilbert the TDK challenge. There you go. I'm sure he'll flunk. But Gilbert, you want to take it? Sure. Okay. Hmm. What I'm going to do is play um, a, a CD. And I know music. <laughs> All right. I'm going to play a CD. This test has a lot of validity. And what I'm going to do is play a tape. All right. I'm going to play CD and tape. And then you're going to try and guess which is which. Okay. All right. Can you, you got do it that? now? All right. Here we go. Vaguely. All right. <laughs> now just tell me what you think it is. Okay. Here we go. All right, that's number one. Write down T or C. All right? Write it down, T or C. Oh, okay. Give him a pen. he's not prepared. No, he's not. I gotta hear both of them. All right. You're gonna get five chances. Are you ready? Yes. All right, here we go. Play along, you'll get free cassettes. (laughs) (laughs) All right, that was number one. Here's number two. Number two, write down a T or a C. Okay, here's number what, three. What does the T or C mean? Oh, boy. Okay, we're in big trouble today. All right, now here, write down number three. Yes. All right, you got that? Yes. All right, write it down. Okay. What do you think it is? <laughs> you won't he write it down. To keep it to I, I don't remember which is right. T or C. All right, now yes. write the, Forget it. <laughs> All right, what do you got so far? What do you got so far? What do you got so far? Uh, let me see. What well, what does the What was number one? The T is T T K. The C is C D. Oh, C D. Okay, I'm gonna say the second one's a C D. <laughs> you're you're wrong already. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Oh, I'm gonna say the second one's T D K. No, no, no. The second yes. one is C D. And what did what did you say yes. was the first one? The first one. Um. I'm going to say the first one's a CD. That's wrong also. Okay. The first two were tape, and the third one was CD. All right. All right. Very good. TDK Challenge. Take the challenge. TDK Pro Challenge has tested over 400 audio professionals. I bet you they never tested Gilbert. You heard it from me. (laughs) This proves Gilbert's a moron. TDK. (laughs) He couldn't even figure out what T and C stood for. (laughs) TDK's challenge revealed that more than 91% of audio professionals could not tell the difference between a recording on CD and the same music recorded on SA. This is the first time uh, the actual uh, person, the contestant, could not tell what a T or a C stood for. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, TDK tape, the best. 92.3 K-Rock. We're back with the Howard You're damn right Stern we're show. back. 
And I'm glad to be back with Gilbert Gottfried, of course, who, uh, let's give him a little plug, Robin. Okay, just a little one, though. Yeah, yeah Caroline's Tomorrow, which is uh, Gilbert's uh, piece de resistance. <laughs> <laughs> Mix... His raison d'être. His raison d'être. Oh, I love when you speak French. <laughs> Get over here. Oh, Robin is such a piece of ass. <laughs> I look at you sometimes. I don't know what to do. I don't care that there are cameras on me now. I don't is know. Is that right? You're just going to embarrass yourself Look now. at the look of love in my eyes. <laughs> 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 it's the same look Marty Feldman has. Yeah, I have that. <laughs> I want to be with you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Caroline's tomorrow. Nick's in Boston, October 8th and 9th. Bananas in Saddlebrook, New Jersey, October 22nd. Governor's on Long Island, October 29th. Hey, Gilbert, what'd you get, a new agent? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Suddenly yeah, he's, he's booked. booked. Yeah. Oh, and USA up all night. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Yeah. Don't yeah. forget that. I, yeah. Are you they working get mad harder when I don't... now? Oh, yes. <laughs> Before I was walking through them. Gilbert is uh, <laughs> Gilbert's such a mess <laughs> that he works for Cable USA Network, uh -huh. which, I mean, really is a cushy job because you don't have to do anything sure. and there's no ratings or anything. Yeah. They accused him of not working hard enough. <laughs> Is that true or yes. false? They did. Yeah, they said I was walking through it. <laughs> Are they more pleased with you now? Well, why would you do anything but walk through that? I didn't introduce the movies with enough feeling. And like the girl who hosts it with the big jugs, like she's not walking through yeah. it. Well, look, she's out dating Larry King. She's right. doing things. Maybe That's I should have. Yes, I mentioned James Kahn about a half hour ago and said I'd be getting back to him. Jimmy Kahn. The actor yeah. who played uh, Santino Corleone in the movie The Godfather. Yeah, he was real good in that. <laughs> <laughs> and not much else. But, uh, yes, he has been cleared of any wrongdoing in the death of a man who was found outside of an apartment building where he was staying. What was he doing? He was sleeping or something? Yeah, he was in the... It was early in the morning when they came and woke him up. So, yeah, he was at the house sleeping. Nobody knows why he was there or who he was visiting. <laughs> and a guy killed himself? Yeah, uh, jumped off his balcony? Uh, apparently, While so he the was guy sleeping. apparently was trying to get from a stairwell to the balcony, and in the leap, he must have fallen. And These things himself. happen. So there was no <laughs> wrongdoing, apparently. Imagine just sleeping through a guy jumping off your... <laughs> I mean, didn't you wake up? Yeah, because people just sort of found the guy lying there. <laughs> what was Al Pacino doing? doing during that? He was in Europe married to an Italian girl who yeah. blew up in a car. Oh. <laughs> like just passing him by. Have you been getting into this uh, Menendez trial that's yes, going very on much so. out in California? I'm so distracted I can hardly come to work. <laughs> Menendez? Menendez, yes. Guilty. <laughs> I well, to Menendez run, guilty. I wanted to run the facts. Let, let's call Light Asner and make sure. <laughs> yeah, he'll know. Maybe he should be released. <laughs> These are two young men, Lyle and mm. Eric Menendez, Chewy. who have been yeah, accused over. of killing their parents. Are they thin? <laughs> <laughs> Describe their appearance. They are good looking guys. They're decent looking guys. Lyle. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, the problem here is that the family was considered a model family. You know, they were well-to-do people. The kid, especially this lie. They were firm. They were handsome. Was a, um, a tennis phenom. You know, he was out there on the tennis circuit. His father had high hopes of him, you know, I guess, becoming a professional on the tennis circuit. Mm -hmm. uh, they were almost nominated tennis family of the year at one point. And then they kill their parents. And then yeah. they walked into a room one day where their parents were watching television and eating strawberries and ice cream. They were watching my E show. Is that right? <laughs> yeah, they, so no wonder they didn't get up off the couch. <laughs> so tell me something. I'm watching this trial. I don't get what's going All on. All right, here's the deal. They pumped 15 bullets or something oh. into their parents, or right into their faces and bodies. And James Conn and then, slept through it. <laughs> <laughs> and then went off on a shopping spree, apparently. But they kill their parents, so what's the crime? <laughs> Is that your question? Yeah. <laughs> why would uh, why would anybody be up on charges? No. So anyway, guilty with explanation. Course, now, of course, they're charged with first degree murder. Oh, I see. I got you now. And uh, their defense is, Howard, that they were sexually abused and physically and emotionally abused for years. Mm. And they didn't know how to break the cycle and they didn't want to be abused anymore and they didn't know how to get away from They should go, problems. Dad, stop that. So they <laughs> finally decided to kill their parents.
they tell stories of how it started. Lyle has been on the stand for about a week now, mm -hmm. and uh, pretty soon <laughs> he will be meeting the prosecutors. They get to cross-examine him starting today, I think. Mom, Dad, you're spanking me way too much. Well, here's the deal. The father <laughs> was, uh, you know, shortly after Lyle I, I don't started, like the way you smile when you spank me. ...started playing tennis, his father started massaging him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You know, yeah. to help him out. I did not know that. <laughs> <laughs> now you're changing your story, aren't you, Gilbert? Yes, the massages started shortly after Lower the tennis dad. started. Lower. And as he was oh. massaging his son, he started fondling. Is there something wrong with this, Dad? <laughs> and eventually led to oral sex and rehab. Oh. My dad does that to me. No, <laughs> not during <laughs> tennis, though. Never. <laughs> he then said, Lyle says his father... <laughs> Told him. <laughs> Will you two stop it? Come on, that's funny. It's a funny story. Come on, you gotta admit. You guys finally endured tennis? <laughs> no, with a massage. Where was the family that. reunion? At a bathhouse? <laughs> his father told him, Howard, that Greek soldiers often had sex with each other really? before they would go off to war. And people say I'm a bad father just because I don't have time to spend with the kids. And that this was a normal expression of love. Oh, Greek soldiers do it? Okay. That makes it normal. <laughs> so, so Lyle said... As long said, as Greek soldiers do it, now I know it's a normal thing. <laughs> so Lyle said that when he was eight, he took his brother Eric into the woods and started doing it to him. Oh. <laughs> it's normal. Stop, Gilbert. <laughs> Lyle says his mother refused to stop the father from raping them, wow. saying that their dad needed to punish them when they were bad. <laughs> <laughs> what could they have done that bad to deserve that? And the mother also... You, you got an A on your math test. Bad enough. <laughs> <laughs> the mother Pull your also pants down. used to fly into rages, Howard. Oh, is that right? And Lyle testified that she would punish him by making him lie <laughs> under her bed, <laughs> where Mommy. the pet ferret... <laughs> Went to the bathroom. Oh, oh, oh. Not, honey, it's wet down here. <laughs> she would also imagine walk having around. two parents like that. Yeah, though? she would also walk around with her bathrobe open oh. mm. and ask Ooh. her son to fondle her. You know what? Seriously though, it's like one parent gets into it, then the other one automatically gets into it. What are you it. gonna do? It's, it's sort of they buy into it. It's like yeah. even my own parents. Like my father would yell at me, and my mother wouldn't yell at him or anything. She'd just say, "What's the matter with you?" To me. She would join forces? Yeah, she would start him. yelling at me, too. <laughs> <laughs> she would get into it. Because at least he wasn't yelling at her. Oh, boy. But what do you, do you, do you believe this? Or do you think... Well, they've had other witnesses who have corroborated some oh, of yeah? this stuff. You know, they've had... Uh, apparently, the father had pornography all over the house, and they've presented into evidence pictures the father took of the boy's genitals. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Gilbert, didn't your dad... Uh, take pictures of your genitals? Oh, uh, constantly. Yeah. <laughs> no, but it, seriously, your dad did some weird no, stuff, didn't he, he? He used to bring me into those, like, four pictures for a quarter. Oh, one of those little boots? <laughs> <laughs> and just, like, hold me upside down. Did you ever play tennis with your father? Oh, yes, and these boys are... We keep calling them boys, but they're not really boys. They're in their 20s. These are grown men, right? Lyle this is, is like, 25 at this like point. Like Abbott and Costello. And boys, he admit boys. in the courtroom that he is bald and wears a toupee. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. No, I didn't realize uh, that. Apparently, one of the abuses that His he father suffered, balled him. Well, uh, no, I couldn't avoid it. My dad fondled my hair off. <laughs> <laughs> abuses he suffered was that his mother used to rip his toupee off. Oh, really? <laughs> All right, we got to take a break. So are these boys guilty? <laughs> They're guilty. It's not a real abuse. Uh, the boys are guilty. They're, what is not a real abuse? Let me ripping off a toupee. Oh, wow. get Ad Asner on the phone right away. <laughs> no, let me tell you something. I'm, I'm going to tell you what the story is. The, yeah. these, some of these stories are probably true. Some of them are a little exaggerated. But I'm going to tell you something. Uh, you cannot... How, what age were they when they killed their parents? They, they just did this a couple of years ago. Yeah, I mean, you can't be in your 20s and kill your parents over this now. You could have moved out of the house. Could have informed the authorities. Could, could have, have taken pulled them. your pants up. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> there's a million things you could do at this point. This idea that you can kill somebody is, uh, is unbelievable to me. They're, in other words, it's okay to kill someone... Because, well, you had a bad child. Well, what if the, chi the abuse started when you're eight years old and now you're completely locked in and you've been turned into an emotional midget as a result? That's of me. It. Yeah, I, I don't care. <laughs> Rise above it. You cannot go around killing people. That's it. There's there a law. You, you would convict them of first-degree murder and send them to the gas chamber? If I get raped at eight, 
And uh, I know my shrinker doesn't get sore at 22. I should have to my I might be mad at my father. I might be mad at my mother. But I certainly would uh, not kill them. You I have no them. sympathy. Absolutely not. Now, what if everyone who ever had a problem with their parents now suddenly killed them and said, my defense is I had a problem with my parents? We'd be uh, rid of a few bad people. Exactly. It's outrageous. Oh, that's bad? No, you can't have people killing each other. They are guilty and they should be sent to the gas chamber. All right. No mitigating circumstances. None whatsoever. Absolutely none. Could you send us to Greece? <laughs> we'll be back right after this. <laughs> Tri-State Consumer Insurance is such a good deal, and I love to tell you about it. I try to kick the camera crews out of here. They won't leave. Uh. I said, hey, guys, isn't it enough? You got like a half-hour tape. Isn't that sort of enough? It's sort of the same thing over and over again. And they're just like, nah. <laughs> we want to see it from a different angle. Yeah, there's only uh. two angles. Yeah. You know, then we could chill out and we could... Fart a little and relax. <laughs> I can't even pass wind in here, Robin. Well, I don't mind. That's not bad. That's I don't mind bad. if Gilbert smells it, but like. Yeah. <laughs> but but actual human being. Yeah. <laughs> Gilbert's a slug. <laughs> hey, anyway, Tri-State Consumer Insurance is great. And why is Tri-State Consumer Insurance so great, Robin? I'll tell you why. Price. That's it. Great insurance at a low price. Now, name a big insurance company. Would, would you consider State Farm a big company? Oh, yes. I All would right. consider that one of the biggest. Everybody knows the name State Farm. And yet, State Farm comes in with a premium of $1,230, where Tri-State's premium was $805, a so savings of over $400 a year. Boy, that's important. $400 a year. Well, hey, Mr. You know, Gilbert's so rich because he saves every penny <laughs> he ever earns. But the rest of us, Robin, need the money. We could use $400 a year. We could use $600 a year. We could use $1,200 a year. I give it a T. <laughs> <laughs> Look, you're probably going over your bills this past weekend looking for a way to save money. Why don't you start with your auto insurance bill by calling Tri-State for a free quote. You'll be amazed. First of all, it's great insurance. A recent report issued by the New York State Insurance Department said that out of 167 insurance companies, listen to this, Tri-State Consumer Insurance was ranked among the top three for the best in claims and customer service. That means all the big companies, Geico, Allstate, State Farm, Tri-State has a better rating than them. Or at least as good. And they are A-rated for financial stability by Demotech. You can't get a higher rating than that, Robin. Demotech. Demotech. What is you a demo take? The they bottom. Got the highest rating. <laughs> yeah, the bottom line is this, Robin. Thousands of people have already switched to Tri-State from Geico, State Farm, and Allstate. So should you at least get a free rate quote and find out what you should be paying for insurance? Dial one eight hundred join now. One eight hundred J O I N N O W. One eight hundred join now for a free rate quote. This offer is for residents of Long Island and the five boroughs of New York. Pick up the phone and dial one eight hundred join now. Three K Rock. We're back with the Howard Stern Show. Gilbert Gottfried tonight. Oh, excuse me. Tomorrow night at Caroline's. Who the hell's available to go see Gilbert tomorrow night at Caroline's? There must be someone. I mean, isn't that a weeknight? Don't most people have to go to work? A lot of people stay out. They don't do what we do. The Melendez brothers. Men <laughs> right. Menendez. Menendez. See. Yeah. Mm. You like candy? I like candy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, all right. Gilbert will be at Nixon, Boston, October 8th and 9th. Bananas in Saddlebrook, New Jersey, October 22nd. Governors on Long Island, October 29th. And uh, look for the Ren and Stampy album with uh, Billy West. Absolutely. You like Greek soldiers? I like Greek soldiers. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's uh, find out what else is in the news. A lot of hijinks, Robin. It's incredible. A lot of fun with the news, even with the most horrible of stories. You have yeah. gone. I have gone. <laughs> Even the most serious of stories. Even Senor Wentz is making an appearance. I molest my children. You molest your children. <laughs> <laughs> I spank your behind. You spank my behind. What else is in the news? One man has died, apparently, in an earthquake in Oregon. <laughs> <laughs> Easy, Jackie. A man died, for God's sake. That's right. The quake apparently caused a rock slide on a highway burying his car. Gilbert happy because at least there's one guy worse off than him. Yeah. <laughs> he was in an earthquake. Oregon's governor has declared the area around the site a state of emergency. It was hmm. a rather mild earthquake, but it did cause some damage. 
Meanwhile, in I, I did not know about the earthquake. That, that's wild. And it that's very that, clever. Uh, <laughs> is it clever of the earthquake? Oh, clever, clever stuff. <laughs> <laughs> in about seven <laughs> cities <laughs> in Oregon, seven cities and counties, they will be deciding today whether <laughs> gays should be recognized by the law. Apparently in Oregon they have a lot of problem with... Yeah, they're the ones wearing the dresses. That's how you recognize them. <laughs> they, oh! They have a lot of problems with gays. <laughs> Who doesn't? They would like... Oh, <laughs> stop it. The measures would prohibit local government... Yeah, what are they measuring? Oh! Giving people special treatment based on sexual orientation. I wonder if the quake means anything in light of all this. What, in Oregon? Yeah. You think that the Oregonians are being punished by yes, the earthquake? Yes, By that light earthquake? <laughs> Very mild earthquake. Mild. Yeah, mild. Not, not if you're that guy who died in it. <laughs> <laughs> mild earthquake. Gee, great. Everybody survived except you. <laughs> These are the kind of earthquakes that don't kill anybody except you. Except you. Yeah. Gay God. <laughs> <laughs> Sent to you by a gay god. That's very true. Boom! You're dead, all of you. <laughs> in, in Tampa, Florida, they've made a couple of arrests. In yeah, those gays like to tamper with each other. Oh! Will you calm down? He's, you, know, you know, he hasn't been on the show in a while. Yeah, I'm sorry. He's I'll, shot out of the he's cannon. He's just free associating all over yeah. the place. Yeah, just, every other word is a free association. <laughs> Gilbert, you're out of control. Tying all the stories together. Let the story establish itself, and oh, then we oh, do oh, some humor. Right, all right. This happened in Tampa, Florida. You know, in Florida, a lot of foreigners have been killed, and I told I'd you I'd like to day. kill some foreigners. Oh, and then tamper with them. Is that a far enough into the story? <laughs> yeah, you allowed, you allowed enough words to go oh, okay. by. <laughs> anyway, the other day I told you a 17-year-old Turkish boy who was here as an exchange student was found dead. <laughs> they have made a couple of arrests in that case, Howard. Yes. And they say they, he, wa he wasn't killed just because he was a foreigner. <laughs> they think the motive was that he... Actually, Jackie left. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Meanwhile, uh, here at home, we're undergoing uh, the jury selection in the World Trade Center bombing mm. case. <laughs> and in the Post today, they have uh, transcripts of the tapes that were made by the informant who got to meet a lot of these uh, terrorists while they were plotting. Cole. <laughs> and some of the transcripts show uh, some interesting things. First of all, do these guys have to come in here while I'm trying to work? <laughs> Are they filming you? That's a test they to see if you're ready for television. The door. <laughs> guys, guys, come they back in here. In. Come over here. Could you just hold off? Yeah, right. I try to get rid of them. They won't leave. I don't know. You're losing control. I <laughs> <You> know. <laughs> anyway, they, they talk about everything on the tapes. They talk about, uh, attempt, you know, thinking about uh, attempting to assassinate the president of Egypt. Right. They talk about the different sites they might bomb. They talk about how before they decided to hit the World Trade Center, they thought about doing the U.N., but then the idea... They thought about doing Angela Lansbury. <laughs> but the idea was to cost uh, the country millions of dollars, so they decided to bomb the World Trade Center instead. He talks about the sloppiness of the work, the leader of the whole group. He says, those children we sent to bomb the World Trade Center, they should have found one of the cornerstones to leave the van of explosives near to so that the whole place would have been demolished. They didn't do the job right. The swine. <laughs> then they talk about life in New York. You know, he's talking to a guy, I guess, who just got here. And he says, look, don't mix it up with anybody here. The people here are all very, very discourteous. Even the children carry guns. So. Bastards. <laughs> so yeah. Don't mess with any New Yorkers. They're bad. Send them all out of here. You don't cost us $400,000 a year in towels for their heads. <laughs> Bastards. <laughs> so those are just some of the things revealed by those transcripts mm. and tapes made by an informant. Gilbert's so handsome. Yes, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Schools opened yesterday in New York, and there was only just mass confusion. Oh, oh, People had no idea horrible. where to go, what to do. They say it'll still be months <laughs> before all the asbestos is cleared out of the school so that they could get back to normal. And then there'll be as best as possible. <laughs> and it'll it's our mayor. about $50 million <laughs> dollars Robert, to get isn't it, it all cleaned up. Isn't it the mayor's fault? Seriously? I mean, is he well, what's this disorganized? Well, this is his administration. They, they're disorganized. Yeah, we're going to do something about the axe <laughs>
<laughs> this is indicative of the kind of leadership he has provided, I would assume. <laughs> yeah, it's indicative of the kind of... <laughs> By the way, Gilbert was collecting the asbestos they were throwing away because he saves everything. <laughs> This whole apartment is filled with his best. Another terrible story, Howard. Uh-oh, a terrible story, Fred. A uh -oh. Long Island woman is facing charges that she smashed the head of her baby son onto a bedpost because he was crying. Wait, wait, say that again. Wait, wait, say Can you say that again? <laughs> a Long Island woman is facing charges that she smashed the head of her baby son onto a bedpost because he was crying. <laughs> <laughs> The incident, Howard, happened in a domestic violence it, shelter. It was Kathy Lee Gifford. Oh, stop it. Cassidy. Cassidy! I'm going to smash your head. Cassidy! <laughs> the 20-year-old mother was arrested. Was it Kathy And charged Lee. with assaulting her son. So. Yes, Kathy Lee's not 20. She's not 20. She's like 45. The mother is estranged from her fa uh, the baby's father. <laughs> and has been living at the domestic violence shelter for about two weeks. <laughs> and and the good news is she'll be doing a guest appearance on Lou Grant. <laughs> she apparently smashed her baby's head against the bedpost to stop him from crying. And Asher just called. He says uh, she's innocent. <laughs> <laughs> she, she said she didn't do it. Innocent. She said she didn't do it, and I believe her. The mother is an unemployed high school dropout and is to be arraigned today on charges of first-degree assault and three outstanding warrants. She didn't get a fair trial. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, do you know... Mary would have done the same thing. <laughs> do you know how much money we spend on the criminally insane? Five billion dollars a year? Not quite that much. Oh. Forty-eight million dollars annually. <laughs> because these people wind up go getting disability. Right. As it is criminally insane. We support the criminally insane, Robert. Yes, there's an article in the Daily News today which cites the case of uh, the Hayes family. Michael Charles Hayes was uh, this guy who killed four people in North Carolina on a shooting rampage. <laughs> And now his victim's families claim that he's living the life of Riley. So they say he has a motorcycle. Wow. You mean he has a room full of stereo equipment. Because he was declared criminally insane. Right. And he gets $536 a month from Uncle Sam. Listen to him. He's laughing at us. Oh, stop it. <laughs> so you mean, in other words, the guy goes out and murders 11 people. That's right. That's how he qualified for disability. And then we say... Let us buy you lunch. Yeah. That's your punishment. That's right. It's outrageous. It's an outrage. Time to move. And he has a huge wardrobe to boot. So now he's a lot now he's not killing anyone because he's happy. I guess so. Right. He's watching TV and listening to music and riding his motorcycle, so he's no longer a threat to society. Same thing uh, Billy West does all day. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know, I've always had a problem with that uh, uh, insanity defense. Oh, please, Robin. I'm with you on that. Boy. <laughs> Oh, you beheaded your neighbor? Here's a new bicycle. <laughs> you just won the lottery. Yeah, that's how our society rewards people. Mass I mean, murder, natural selection. Right. <laughs> All I know is I, I get fined by the FCC and their people uh, murdering and being supported by, by uh, the taxpayers of this country. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Man, I want to tell you. <laughs> but that's enough to get your man steam. <laughs> Boy, that's wild, isn't it? Hey, how about that? Hold on to your hat. <laughs> hey, how about those murderers, huh? Hey, wow. <laughs> Boy, that Linda Evans, she's something, isn't she? <laughs> Over in France, Howard, they're not only upset with us because of... Uh, Skunks. <laughs> the possible loss of food subsidies to farmers. They're also upset that the American film industry may soon crush the French film industry if they have to remove government protection. Mm, duh. <laughs> <laughs> Fred, you're lucky you live on Mars. <laughs> so now a bunch of uh, French filmmakers, including Gerard Depardieu, mm, I want to rip your minky. <laughs> have gone before the European Parliament to ask that uh, governmental protections be allowed to continue under any new proposals they proclaim to open. Uh, no, next order of business. <laughs> in France, so that the American film industry doesn't demolish their own. They say that culture is the one thing that they that should be accepted. That's really? great. Okay, you can leave. <laughs> next order. <laughs> so that uh, wow. they don't wind up going the way of the film industries in Italy and Germany, which are almost non-existent at this point. 
Uh, so the French upset with us again just because we make good movies. We do not like your movies. We do not like your movies. It's six. I a deep do. And if I get thrown out of the movies, all I will be able to do is allegedly rip women. <laughs> and that stunts. <laughs> Apparently, they have some regulation over Where's there. Where's my snill? That fifty percent of the movies shown on television in the region have to be made in Europe. Ooh. So that's the way they keep control. Have to be. <laughs> have to be. I, I know how to get the Indians back. <laughs> you take pictures of Raven's ass, <laughs> and you're shot twenty-four hours a day. <laughs> Good news this weekend at the box office for Bruce Willis. <laughs> Here's a guy who hasn't had a lot of yeah. good things happening for him in the movies anyway in the last couple of years, but his new movie, Striking Distance, <laughs> debuted at number one. You like weekend. getting struck? I like getting struck! <laughs> you stop. <laughs> debuted at number one this weekend, knocking the fugitive. You I want me to knock not. you? I want you to knock me! <laughs> <laughs> so you mean Bruce Willis' is best news in five years besides the fact that his hair fell out is that his movie is doing well? His movie is, he's finally got a movie that did well. Every picture I see of him, he's got different hair. Like, like Sometimes he appears to be back in. And... I know. Even in this movie, you look at it from frame to frame, his hair changes. Wow. No sometimes wonder it's such a success. Sometimes he's got hair. Sometimes he doesn't have hair. Wow. It's incredible. Charles Barkley is going to be the first host of uh, the new season of Saturday Night Live, and Nirvana will be the musical guest. Well, he should be very funny, Charles Barkley. I'm uh, sure. Hello, everyone. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> Hi, is you. Do, uh, this is the show where you go, sake to me, sake to me, sake to me. <laughs> very interesting. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Bruce Willis. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Mr. Mr. Charles Barkley. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen. Uh, sake to me, sake to me. May, may the bird of paradise fly into your bippy. <laughs> uh, put no, that Charles, your... Charles, we're on Saturday Night Live. Not oh. Now, Martin we're going to, you got to do like a sketch or monologue yeah, or something. Well, when is I going to meet all the Johnsons? Who? <laughs> now, you don't understand. So now, do you have a problem because you can't read? Yeah. It, uh, no, no. no it, it's Gold at Home going to be coming out here. <laughs> but I can't read that cue card. You nope. ain't going to splash me with a bucket of water when I say it's talking to me, is you? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. This is Saturday Night Live. Uh, Mr. Barker, please. <laughs> I can't read the cue card. The, the words are more than C letters. <laughs> Yeah, there you go. Is there any ex Bexis in here? <laughs> Let getting... me go on. All right. the cast of Did you want to hear more of uh, Charles Barkley? Yeah. Michael Myers. Mike Myers. He's, he's back. Hi, hi, this is this be Wabe's world. <laughs> Bill Hartman will be there. Kevin Nealon will be there. Chris Farley, Julia Sweeney. Yeah, Adam I'm Sandler, John Belushi. Rob Schneider. <laughs> I, I'm Ellen Nealon Cleghorn, trying David to read Spade, the cue cards. Tim Meadows and Melanie Melanie Hutzel. Melanie Hutzel. Hey, hey, give me Melanie some Hutzel. <laughs> hey, Melanie, give me some of that Hutzel. <laughs> but Dana Carvey will not be there. He the best one. <laughs> <laughs> Charles, is that why you uh, went on the show? The show ain't gonna be funny without the, without Dana Carvey. <laughs> when, when, when is I gonna meet John Belushi? <laughs> <laughs> How come I don't see John Belushi around here? <laughs> because he's dead. Oh yeah. Oh, they wrote that down for me, but I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> On Maury Povich today, Latoya Jackson. Oh, is, is, is she know where John Belushi is? <laughs> Latoya Jackson on there? Yes. Apparently, she'll be there to promote her step-up video, but also to answer questions about Michael. I saw her on Larry King today. It was funny because when she was in here, she was complaining to me, hey, all you did was ask me about Michael Jackson. I didn't get to talk about my step-up video. Yes. And then she was on Larry King. She says, I didn't get to talk about my step-up video. All you did was ask me about Michael Jackson. And now I'm sure I'm Maury Povich. Of course. The same uh, thing. I like the exercise with Natumba. <laughs> I don't know. All right. On Sally Jesse Raphael. Women having children later in life. I think she's going to have the pointer sister who just had twins. And she's 49 or something. She's a grandmother, and mm. she just had these uh You're a grandmother, babies. and you just had twins. <laughs> hmm. 
That's quite an you accomplishment. Do you like my new red glasses? <laughs> On Geraldo, I think he's having the woman who cut off her husband's penis today. Oh, yeah, uh. that's good. On Donahue, a KKK member's confession. <laughs> <laughs> So, interesting things for the afternoon. Tonight on TV, you can see <laughs> Saved by the Bell, the college years. And they say there's nothing on TV. <laughs> <laughs> My kids love that. Really? They're yeah. into Saved by the Bell? Yeah, they love it. Great. What is getting by? Is that... The... It's a homosexual thing. Is... <laughs> <laughs> and the John... You like getting by? I like getting by. <laughs> The John Larroquette show can be seen at nine o'clock. Hey, hey, no. Bump. <laughs> Channel four. That's uh, his He's not new funny. show on NBC. Did you see the Emmys and they had like Paula Poundstone running around? Yeah. Is she off. What did they groom her for? She's got a TV show coming up this season. Is, is, is she supposed to be funny? Is she the new Paulie Shore? She goes around with a camera and, and just this like... is the curtain over here. This is this is. Take a look at this. This is the curtain and, and this is the floor where people are, are. I think they're supposed to stand here, but um, my pop tarts fell out of my dress. <laughs> yeah, that, that was it the whole time. Okay, oh. now over here. Now, what do you do, sir? Thank you. Um, <laughs> they're frantically running around in two minutes. Or okay, okay, okay. My tuxedo. Okay, okay. <laughs> She's trying to show you backstage at the Emmys, and she's frantic. I mean, just frantic. Yeah. I want to show you that I'm live. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> Grabbing things. Grabbing things. Working in the room. I'm Robin Williams. <laughs> <laughs> the female Robin Williams. <laughs> Paula Poundstone. <laughs> yes, her, her, she's got a show. I think it's coming up in mid-season. She's an important talent. Watch, she'll have a hit, too. You get a feeling like anyone can get a hit television show at this point? It's not that easy. They already canceled three shows on CBS. Did they? Yeah. I don't know, man. I was watching that Paula Poundstone. You want some advice, honey? Calm down and comb your hair. <laughs> <laughs> and there's also something on tonight at 9.30 called the second half. I don't know what that is either. Can I touch your second half? <laughs> <laughs> on Dateline tonight, half. though, one of those magazine shows, a woman <laughs> is accused of trying to sell her young son. Can I buy your young son? <laughs> <laughs> on the uh, Fox Network? <laughs> oh, wait a minute. On channel uh, on CBS tonight, there's a Charles Charles Bronson movie that he made for television. F him. Along with uh, Dana Delaney. I haven't seen Charles Bronson do anything in a couple of years. He sucks. Not since his wife. I, I don't even understand how he's famous. He sucks. <laughs> That's not even acting. I'm going to kill you, Paul Kersey. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Paul Curtsy. <laughs> Not even acting. A bad friggin' mustache. <laughs> you pockmark bastard. <laughs> if his face wasn't wrinkled, he would have no talent. <laughs> this evening, there's the show Rock. Yeah, that's good. A murderer. <laughs> in my TV show. I only I killed one man. I can have a hit. I'm Joey, pay, Joey, I'm... Joey, you've been living with us for six weeks now. <laughs> I'm going to have to kill you if you don't leave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, every now, every Joey. conflict should be resolved with him killing someone. Yeah, and he's serious when he makes that threat. You ain't going to get in the bed with me, Rock. <laughs> Mm -mm -mm. I'll kill you if you don't let me. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> you ain't going to get near me, Rock. Mm. I'm going to kill you, meathead. <laughs> <laughs> I need a... Mm, I need a co-star. Now, somebody has strangled their wife. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm a little changed in the cast this year. Hey, why don't they give the Menendez as a variety show? <laughs> <laughs> We killed our parents. Can we be on TV? <laughs> <laughs> on WABC, they're weighing in with their... Uh, now, the Melendez boys uh, didn't admit to it, killing our parents. <laughs> their usual lineup, Howard, a full house. Mm. And then there's something new called Phenom, which is that Judith Light... Boom. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the woman from uh, Who's the Boss? She has a new show on. Then, of course, Roseanne will be there in coach. And uh, the new face. Stephen Bochco series... NYPD Blue will be debuting. Is it really blue? Or are you just saying that? No, that, the whole name is NYPD Blue, the color blue. Oh, I got you. Because like, remember the Elvis movie Blue Hawaii? <laughs> that, they, that was Hawaii. The critics called it Blue Hawaii. <laughs> well, NYPD Blue has been very controversial. Uh, the Reverend Donald Wildman has been campaigning <laughs> to have it taken off the air before it even reached the air. I mean, all of these and shows. And a number of affiliates for ABC have decided not to run it. 
Well, you know, that's so ridiculous, because from what I understand, the show's not even dirty. It's just like a bunch of guys running around being cops. Real cops. Yeah. They're like, trying to get a little more real. So these people speak in real language. And, of course, all the cowards who own TV stations just crumble as soon as they hear controversy. And, and believe me, all these shows bore me. It sounds like uh, tonight I'll be uh, using my TV as a coffee table. <laughs> <laughs> what a bumper crop of dog crap shows. <laughs> Well, NYPD Blue is actually getting very good reviews. They say it's even better than Hill Street. Yeah, yeah, I'm tired. <laughs> Twice as many people are watching it than watched Homicide. <laughs> no. 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 There you go. That's all I have to say. Any lesbians in that NYPD Blue? <laughs> <laughs> Not to my knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got to get out of here. Let's do some plugs. Gilbert, always good to see you. <laughs> All right, sometimes it's good to see you. <laughs> sometimes it's a little overbearing. I might have, I might have ripped up Gilbert's plug. <laughs> <laughs> it's about five minutes. Ago, he wasn't that funny, so I got angry. At All right, here it is. Rip up plug. Rip up plug. <laughs> Gilbert's going to be at Caroline's tomorrow night. You want to see a funny show? You go see Gilbert. He's a very funny man. He'll be funny at Nick's in Boston, October eighth and ninth, and he'll be even funnier at Bananas in Saddlebrook, New Jersey, October twenty second. And then go see the Gilbert Show, Gilbert Gottfried, Governors on Long Island, October 29th. Now, and USA Up All Night, which I'm not walking through anymore. Yeah, he's really putting yeah. some energy yeah. into it. Yeah, like that's, that's a show that needs energy. Yeah, you better tune in to see what Gilbert's up to. Isn't that where you're on for like five seconds and they show a movie yeah. the whole rest of the time? But I didn't have a much emotional range yeah. when I did it. Who told you that? One of the producers yes. of the show? <laughs> yeah. He's producing at USA Network. And he's telling you about your career. Hey, by the way, Jackie Platinum, Joke Page Martley. Now, you want to see a funny comic this Thursday, September 23rd. One big show at the east. And a chicken. <laughs> a man's talking to a prostitute. <laughs> the East Side Comedy Club. <gasps> a man and a chicken going to a bar. <laughs> Big show at uh, the Eastside Comedy Club in Farmingdale. <laughs> Jackie really does just laugh during yeah. his entire show. <laughs> Jackie's show, you just heard it. This Thursday, September 23rd, a big show at the Eastside Comedy Club in Farmingdale. For information, call the all digital 516 He does interrupt that every once in a while with a joke. Yeah. If you first give a joke before you do a laugh. Friday afternoon, Jackie, October 1st from 3 to 11. Jackie will be Grand Marshal. Of the Greater New York Beer Expo at the Jacob Javits Center. Go meet Jackie and Boy Gary. <laughs> Boy Gary this Saturday. <laughs> Boy Gary this Saturday. <laughs> Boy Gary this Saturday. <laughs> Boy Gary, this Saturday, Big City Sounds on Shelton Road in Piscataway, New Jersey, from noon to 2 p.m. CBS is here. Both CBS and E at the same time. Both, what do I do? Bowie. 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 Mama Monkey. To get on Suttering John's mailing list, call 609 546 Stupid. Attention cyclists, the Don Furman Memorial Dock Race.
Keeping score, the cameras just came in and gave the boys a new burst of energy. <laughs> hey, I just got back from Cleveland. I really killed. <laughs> except, 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 Roberto Santiago gave me a bad review. <laughs> Hey, big deal. We got the 4th of July party coming up. <laughs> Unfortunately, we didn't have much money, so we couldn't buy a lot of clams. Yeah, the party's going to cost me money. Hey, Nancy just got a call from the Friars Club. They're going to let me sit in on a roast. Hey, guess what? I'm Grand Marshal of the Beer Expo. <laughs> but I have to pay for the beer. <laughs> all right, enough of this. I got to get going. I'm going all day with this. Did you finish the Don Furman race? Oh, Don Furman race. Oh. Hey, how about that Don Furman? The attention cyclist. Hey, wow, isn't he? <laughs> the Don Furman Memorial Dock race will be held Saturday, October 10th in Montauk, Long Island. Let's hear it for Don Furman. <laughs> For information, call 212-388-8031 or 516-267-6313. Ride with Fred Norris and Princess Norris. Yeah. A chicken walks in with a bicycle. <laughs> if you're planning a wedding or Christmas party, you need a, a great... A talking to a hooker. <laughs> you better hurry. If you're planning a wedding or Christmas party, you need a great DJ. It's not too early to call Scott the Engineer's Rocket <laughs> Entertainment. Toll free. <laughs> At 1-800-PARTY-MC. <laughs> and if you want to hire Scott in the New York area, call, call 718-BAG-5040. All right, Robin, I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>